Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the features of Java. If we talk about the features of Java, the first feature is Java is compiled and interpreted language. We are understanding with the help of the diagram. Let us suppose that we are creating a Java file, let's say ankit.java. And inside that file, we are writing certain code, maybe some lines. So this is called source code. It can also be called the Java code. So here, first of all, we are having is the compilation phase where we are having is the Java compiler. It convert the source code or source file to the byte code, which is dot class file. So here, Anki dot class file is created. This file nobody can read because it contains the data which is not readable by the user or by the system. It is very secured file. So that's why it is the byte code. In this step, we are converting the source code into the byte code. That means dot Java file into the dot class file. So this is called compiled or compilation phase. Now this byte code is very much secure that we can send on some network. Now this byte code can be converted to the machine code depending upon the operating system. Let's say we want the file for the window so we can convert the byte code into the native machine code depending upon the windows or for the Mac or for the Linux. So depending upon the operating system according to that we have Java virtual machine. So JVM convert byte code to the machine code. Machine code is also called native code. Machine code or the native code is the low level language which can run on the operating system. So here we are converting the byte code to the native or machine code which is depending upon the operating system. This is the interpreted phase or interpreter phase. So in Java we are having is the compiled phase and interpreted phase. That's why Java is called compiled and interpreted language. So first of all compiler convert source code to the byte code. In second step interpreter convert byte code to the native or machine code. The next feature of Java is that it is platform independent and portable. In Java, the source code is converted to the byte code and this byte code is converted to the machine code. Depending upon the machine, it can work on window or Mac or Linux. Means on any platform it can work. That's why it is platform independent. So Java program can run on any OS processor and system. In Java, the source code is first converted to the byte code. This byte code nobody can read. It is very much secure. So it is easy to send the byte code from one system to another. That's why it is portable. So Java program can be moved from one computer to another. That's why Java programs are portable. Next feature of Java is that it is object oriented language. Object oriented language has four feature. The first feature is abstraction means hiding the unnecessary data from the user. Let us suppose that you are having the Instagram. In the Instagram, you are pasting some image. And let's say you are having in the Instagram maybe 1 million likes. So where those likes are stored, user is not aware. Which variable we are using, user is not aware. User is only aware that my image is this and my likes are 1 million. That's it. So. This is called abstraction means hiding the unnecessary data from the user. Which variable we are using into the program, which class we are using, user should not know. User should only run on the program, that's it. So this is the abstraction. The second feature is polymorphism. Polymorphism means one thing into many form. Poly means one, more means multiple, phys means form. Let us suppose that we are having is the function which is sum. That is for sum of a and b. Similarly, we are taking a function sum for making the sum of a comma b comma c. Here the name is same which is sum. So here one word we are using for multiple forms. It is called polymorphism. Next is inheritance. Inheritance is used for 
reusability let us suppose that we are having is the class now that class data we are using into some other class that is called inheritance means already we are having some code and we are using into some other that is called inheritance and the next feature is encapsulation wrapping up of data members and functions inside a class is called encapsulation whenever we are getting a class it contain the variable that means data members and it contain the function that means member function so it contain both it is called encapsulation so here java contain abstraction polymorphism inheritance encapsulation that's why the java is object oriented language the next feature of java is that it is robust and secure java is robust the reason is that it is having strict compile time and run time checking of data types when we are writing the code that is called compile time so at that time if we are using some data type java strictly check it and when you are running that program this is called run time at that time also data types are checked java is robust because it handle memory management as well as exception condition in java we are having memory management which is achieved using the garbage collector here whenever a object is there which is not in use or maybe that is not required later on in the process so at that time java is going to remove it so here this is the part of memory management which is achieved using the garbage collector and in the java program there can be multiple exception and that can be handled just like divide by 0 or maybe file not found null reference so everything can be handled that's why java is robust second thing is that java is secure in java we don't have the concept of pointer we know that pointers are used for pointing the memory address so here we cannot point to any memory because here we don't have the pointer and because of that we are having the proper safety here we are having the security so whenever we are providing some application to the user user data cannot be taken by that program until the permission is given so here in the java we don't have the pointer so here it cannot access the memory without authorization that's why the java is secure the next feature of java is that it is distributed java is distributed because its application we can send from one machine to another let us suppose that we are having a machine let's say it is the m1 i am assuming that m1 is the machine one and we are having the another machine let's say it is m2 which is machine 2 these two machines are connected with each other let's say with some network or internet here we know that first of all the source code is converted to the byte code so let's say at the machine one we are converting the source code to the byte code so we are representing that let's say this is source code and this is converted to the byte code and we know that this byte code is very secure nobody can read that now from the network we can send it to the other machine so here on the other machine we are having is the byte code further the byte code can be converted to the machine code which can run on the operating system so similarly here on the machine 2 it will be converted to the machine code so this is how we can send it through the network very easily so here java application can be shared on internet easily from one machine to another the next feature of java is that it is familiar simple and small java is familiar because its syntax is derived from c and oops concepts are taken from c++ so here the concepts are taken from c and c++ means the syntax of java is taken from c and oops concept that means abstraction polymorphism inheritance encapsulation they are taken from c++ that's why the java is familiar java is simple and small the reason is that here so many concepts which are the problems in c and c++ they are removed 
just like java don't have pointer it do not have preprocessive directive preprocessive packages go to operator overloading multiple inheritance these things are not there into the java that's why java is simple and small so java don't have the pointer preprocessor package go to operator overloading multiple inheritance structure union template because of that java is simple and small the next feature of java is that it is multi threaded and interactive java is multi threaded because it can handle multiple tasks at the same time let us suppose we are having a process let's assume that the name is p a process can have multiple threads let's say we are having the thread 1 thread 2 thread 3 so threads are the part of process now understand that let us suppose that we are having is a google chrome inside the google chrome we are opening various tabs so google chrome is a process and their tabs are the thread so here java is multi threaded that means similar type of task it can perform simultaneously so here multi threading now understand that whenever we are having is a google chrome and its tabs we are opening so that is called multi threading but let's say we are having multiple different different task we are doing let's say we are listening to the music we are opening the media player let's say we are running the game we are having the let's say google chrome or maybe we are having let's say paint open so these are the different different task means different different processes so multi processes means they are the task of different type so here individual chrome paint or maybe your media player or game these are the separate separate tasks so that is called multi processing multi threading means same type of task inside the google chrome if you are opening multiple tabs that is called multi threading so here java is multi threaded it can handle multiple tasks simultaneously which are of same type Java is also interactive the reason is that it also support multiple process synchronization means whenever there are multiple processes it synchronize them and work very fast so that it provide the smooth functioning and it will be more interactive so here in the java we have interactive because it is having the multi process synchronization which construct smooth interaction the meaning is that if we are constructing a java application user can interact very easily very smooth functioning let us suppose that if you are dealing with a java program which is application now here let us suppose that it needs some memory let's say it is having some files which is require or maybe it is taking user input maybe it is accessing the printer so all are the different processes so java application can do all the things together and there is a synchronization so user don't has to wait it is very interactive for the user user can work easily with the java program that's why java program is interactive the next feature of java is that it is high performance in the java we are having multi threading that means a process have multiple threads so those tasks can be executed very fast and because of that speed of java program is very fast so it provides high performance so here in java the speed of execution of java program is very high due to multi threading the next feature of java is that it is dynamic and extensible java is dynamic and extensible because when the java program is running at that time it can link the class libraries methods and objects the second reason is that java can dynamically link and abort the program if required so here in java when the java program is running at that time if some libraries are required methods are required objects are required it can link them or if user says that just abort this program so at the run time java can abort the program so depending upon the response java can link and abort the program so that's why java is dynamic and extensible so that is all about the features of java